Welcome. We appreciate you joining with us to watch this message. We pray it will bless you, that we'll all learn, grow, and become more like Jesus. Let's join in in watching the message at this time. I'd like to start this morning by encouraging us all to think about our parents for a little bit. Now, I realize if you're a teenager, you don't want to do that. But I want, to th want you to think about how much like your parents that you are. That may be the same profession. Maybe how you think like them. This may be good or may be bad, but how, how you're, you're so much like them in various ways. I, I love the era that my dad was born. He was born in 1916, World War I. He experienced the Great Depression as a teenager and a young man. Now, he didn't go to World War II. He was a farmer, and they were exempt in those days for that. But he, he grew up on the farm. He attended a one-room school and dropped out after the eighth grade, which was typical back then. Uh, the farmers wanted their boys back on the farm. As a young man, he farmed with a horse, work horses. And then later on, when the tractors came about and so forth, they got enough money then uh, farmed with tractors. As a kid, he and his brothers fished in the local creeks, and they also skinny dipped in those same local creeks. As a farmer, he was always close to nature. And dad learned the value of hard work. Now, the thing that I think is neat, though, is that dad farmed with workhorses and got to see Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. You think about that amount of technology in that era. It's just unbelievable. And in many ways, I have followed in my dad's footsteps. Uh, I grew up on the farm also, although a much smaller farm. Dad did farm full-time for a while, then he went to the factory, so uh, a little bit different situation, but grew up on the farm, uh, worked along with him and did, did, did several things. Uh, had a barn, which was for work, and also had a barn, which was a lot of fun. Uh, got to fish in the creek. Uh, no, I did not go skinny dipping in the creek. Uh, had had a pool, a public pool, and no, I didn't go skinny dipping in the public pool either, but swam in that public pool, and, and uh, had the woods to work in, cut wood, do things, and we made maple syrup, and so it was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun, much the same way that my dad did. And I appreciate the fact that I did not grow up with a computer or mobile phones or electronic notebooks. Uh, we weren't glued to the TV. We had one, but it, it wasn't the center of our attraction. And many ways we played, brothers and I played the same games that dad played when he was a kid. Uh, spent hours in the sandbox that dad had built for us and had a little roof over it and so forth. So after every time that we started playing, we had to clean the kitty poo out first. And then we built our mountains and our roadways and tunnels through the mountains and had lots of fun doing things there. Spent lots of nights chasing and catching fireflies and would put them in the jars and put them in our bedrooms that light up. And they, yes, they suffered some pretty horrible deaths probably that way. Uh, but I had an insect collection of some really strange insects that Dad had helped me to find, and he built me a, 
an insect box, and unfortunately, when I left the farm 20 years ago for ministry, I don't remember what I did with that insect box and collection, but it was really a neat one. Spent hours playing hide-and-go-seek with my brothers and cousins, at, especially at night. It was more fun. Also played a game, as I'm sure you have, called Follow the Leader. And played with my older brothers and cousins. Uh, unfortunately, I was the youngest in the runt of the litter. So everything that they could do, I, I couldn't do everything. They, you know, they were taller, they were stronger, they were faster, they could jump higher, they could do everything, they could go places that I couldn't go. And I think they enjoyed seeing me suffer. And occasionally they'd let me be the leader. And of course, I couldn't do anything that they couldn't do, and I think they enjoyed mocking me on that. It was this last week I thought, you know, if I'd have been smart, I would have cut a hole in a fence or threw, a, threw something that only I could have fit through, so I could have got on the other side and laughed at them. But they'd have just gone off all by themselves, and they wouldn't have paid any attention to me anyway, so it doesn't matter. But in many ways, I, I grew up much like my dad did, and then my kids kind of grew up that way, but the, the things were starting to change in many ways as far as the farming aspect goes, and then they all left the farm too. But I wouldn't trade when I grew up for anything. Now, I had some bumps in the road and some rough spots, as we all do as kids, but I loved it. I, I, it, was, it was a great time to grow up in. And so when, when you think about your parents, I'm sure you've got some memories and some things that you can think of now that you do like your parents did and maybe some things you do different. So this morning we come to uh, back, we turn back to the series All In, which we're looking at uh, Jesus' uh, commandment. And are we actually all in or are we just playing at this salvation game? Are we playing games with our souls? So let's go back to that scripture that we've been reading the last couple Sundays, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, the words of Jesus. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. Now, we, we've already done a message on denying ourselves, and then a couple weeks ago was on taking up our cross, and so today we come to faithfully follow Jesus, to faithfully follow Jesus. Jesus calls for us to follow him, and to faithfully follow him when we look at denying ourselves and taking up our crosses. And in many ways, we follow him the way that he would expect us to, how he did 2,000 years ago, and in other ways, we follow a little bit differently, such as Dad farmed, I farmed. Dad started farming with horses. I farmed with horse power in the tractors and, and the combines and so forth. So similar but yet different. And, and that follows also with following Jesus. We look at Jesus' life, we see that he walked everywhere. How many of you walked to church this morning? Okay, one. Mary Lou walked across the road to church. She got me on that. So, but most of us, you know, when we ride our cars, our motorcycles, we cross the lake in our motor boat, maybe you've got a sailboat too, but uh, we ride in planes and trains and so forth, and I ride a bicycle, but uh, we, we, we travel different than what Jesus did. Jesus grew up, uh, or started his ministry, I should say, by doing miracles, and those miracles not only was a ministry to help people, but also to attract people to him, to hear his message. And, and so don't think of it only as Jesus healed for the ministry of it. He used it as a tool. And we do similar things, except we don't uh, heal people. We have air conditioning and heating. We have padded pews. We have electronics. We, we have uh, our, our devices to, to attract people. And so we do things similarly, but yet differently. Jesus taught people face to face, as what we're doing here this morning. But at the same time, we've also got a live stream crowd that, that we're ministering to. And then uh, some churches are on TV and on radio and there's social media and there's, there's all different aspects that we use today that's different than Jesus, but yet 
the same message. And so we see these similarities, but yet there are some differences also. There's uh, some things that we do, the, well, put it like this, Jesus wants us to do exactly as he did back then. He wants us to follow him as he did, uh, taught his disciples to follow him. This morning we're going to be following Peter as the example. So we're going to pick on Peter, and I think that many ways, at least I can relate with Peter on a lot of things, and hopefully you can too. Peter was, uh, he was just out there. He, 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 if he thought it, he, well, actually he said it before he thought it many times, often stuck his foot in his mouth and wiggled it sideways. And in a lot of ways, at least we guys can associate with what Peter was. And so we use him for an example so we're going to look at him. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 4. We're going to start with verse 18 and read about the calling of Peter. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. Simon called to Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Now, we've got the example here that Peter and Andrew, brothers, are fishing, and Jesus called to them. Now, understand this profession of fishing. Peter and Andrew were all in on their fishing episode here, that, that fishing was a, a hard business. Uh, fishing isn't always uh, the, the, we think of it nine to five jobs with many of us today, but that wasn't the case because they often fished at night or very early in the morning or started fishing late in the afternoon or the evening. And so there, it wasn't just a typical day job. And when we think about their fishing, they didn't always catch fish, much as what you and I would go fishing, and sometimes we come back with nothing. And if they did catch something, especially if it was a big catch, they've got to clean it right away, clean their nets, clean the fish, prepare the fish, and get them to market. Otherwise, the fish are going to spoil, and they're going to lose their, their work and their labor, and, and so a great deficit. So we can see that Peter and Andrew were all in with their profession. And then Jesus called Peter and Andrew to follow him. And Jesus wanted them to be all in, in following him. So just imagine Peter, do you really think that he understood how all in Jesus wanted him to be? Do you really think that Peter understood that he was going to change his life completely? And he, he wouldn't have understood the what kind of all in that Jesus was expecting him. So for a long time, Peter had the wrong idea about what Jesus wanted. And so if, if you grew up in church, you know a lot of Peter's life. We'll come back and review just a little bit because we're going to skip from the day that Jesus called him to the night of Jesus' betrayal. On the night of Jesus' betrayal, Jesus had eaten with the disciples. He had instituted the Lord's Supper that we just partook of. He washed the disciples' feet to illustrate that servanthood aspect of ministry that Jesus wanted. And then he continued to teach them. And we're going to start reading in John chapter 13, verse 36, where Jesus has said, I'm, I'm going to be going away. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. So let's put up our point and we're going to discuss it. Committing oneself to following Jesus is easy. Committing oneself to following Jesus is easy. Now let's Let's dissect that statement just a little bit while we have this verse remaining up there. There's two sides of commitment. When we look at Peter and Andrew leaving their boat, leaving their nets with their father, and just walking away from the business, that was quite a commitment. They were changing their lives completely. 
they were going to have a different way of working. They were going to have a different income. They were going to have a different uh, uh, lifestyle of traveling instead of just being on the boat or being right there in that, that area all day near their home. They were going to travel the whole area of Israel and even farther north out of, uh, beyond Israel and also farther to the east across the Jordan. And, th- and there's a lot of different aspects that changed in their life. So this was not an, uh, just a flippant decision. That was a major decision. But Peter's comment, I will lay down my life for you, was made flippantly. He really hadn't thought that through. How many times have you heard someone say something flippantly? Yeah, I'll be over there next Saturday. I'll help you out and build that. Or I'll be over there to help you clean the house or whatever it might be. Different between the guys and the gals. And then when it comes to that day, they either forgot all about it or they came up with an excuse because they really didn't commit themselves to it. It was a, it was a lighthearted, flippant, it sounded good in the moment, but that statement, they really weren't going to back it up. And, and how many times have you heard in the church where somebody gives their life to Jesus, baptized maybe even, I'm going to follow, I'm going to do everything that you want me to do, Jesus. I will never leave you. In a month or two months or a year later, they're gone. A, a flippant, a, 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 an in-the-moment decision that they really weren't willing to back up. So you see, committing oneself to following Jesus, to say that is easy. But it's a difficult road to travel. It's a very difficult road to travel. It's easy to commit yourself to Jesus inside these four walls. But when you walk out those doors, everything changes especially the farther away from the building that you get. When you get around your friends and they start laughing at you because you now you've got a different way of thinking, a different way of believing, a different way of acting, a different way of talking. And the way that you're acting now, you're embarrassed to be around your friends when they laugh at you. They ridicule you. And it gets tough. It's It's an... It's easy to commit, but it's difficult to actually live out. So what did Jesus have to say about Peter's comment? That I will lay down my life for you. We go to the next verse, John chapter 13, verse 38. Then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Now, Peter probably just laughed that off too. Ah, I'd never do that. But we know that on that night of his betrayal, he was arrested. He went to a mock trial by the Israelite leaders. And Peter tagged along. He went into areas that John actually got him into. And three times on that night of his betrayal, three different individuals confronted him. Hey, you're one of those people. Hey, weren't weren't you with Jesus? Three times they asked him. And three times Peter denied that he was with him, with Jesus, and denied that he even knew him. It was so easy to do. You see, it's easy to say that we're going to follow Jesus, but it's a difficult act to follow. Therefore, following Jesus is challenging. Just to give the emphasis that we just said that it's a difficult road to travel, it is challenging. It is difficult to do. Not impossible, but difficult. Maybe you can remember as a kid trying to walk in your parents' footsteps. I can remember when I, I don't know how old I was, I was five, six, seven years old. I can remember walking down Main Street of Bluffin, just 10, 15 miles northeast of here, and I was with Dad following him. Now, I don't think he knew what I was doing, but I was stepping in his footsteps. Now, Dad was over six feet tall, 
And Dad moved when he walked. He, he was not a slow walker, so big, long steps, and I was following in his footsteps, taking gigantic steps for my age. If anybody was watching me, they had to think it was hilarious. So, guys, how many times have you done the same thing with your dads? Or, or maybe your son did it with you. And you gals, ever try to put on your mom's high-heeled shoes and walk like mom? I don't know how you gals do it. Looks impossible to me. It looks preposterous to me. And if you're short and think you need to be taller, just forget it. Guys like short girls anyway. So if your husband married you short, you're good short. Don't worry about getting taller anyway. But can we remember trying to walk in our parents' footsteps? It was fun. It was hard. It was challenging. It was difficult, but not impossible. But in that case, we really couldn't keep it up because we just couldn't do those kind of steps and walk like our parents did. But see, this is how it is with Jesus. He says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Is it easy? No. That's why we fail so much. It's extremely difficult at times. And it's easy to say that we're going to follow, but... That's when the sailing is smooth. That's when we're on a, a, a perfectly calm lake. Maybe we've got maybe a little bit of breeze in the sailboat, or we can row across it, but then the storms hit. The winds blow. And all at once, it becomes a whole lot more difficult to live like Jesus, to, to follow in his footsteps. This was Peter. It was easy to say he was going to follow Jesus, but it became a lot more difficult to actually live it out. So Peter's story of his denial doesn't end just there. Now, you think about Peter. He, he, he denied Jesus, and he, he felt horrible, especially, uh, I, I don't know which gospel it is, said that Jesus looked at him when he denied him that third time, and Peter just melted, and he went out and wept. So you can imagine the the heartache and 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 interesting the bible doesn't fill us in on a lot of these details peter had to have carried that for days jesus was crucified never got a chance to say i'm sorry jesus is now gone everybody's mourning him and then god raises jesus back to life now what was peter thinking he still had to know that he blew it. I'll die for you, Jesus. I don't even know him. This had to be eating on his mind, and he had to be wondering, when is Jesus going to bring it up? Or am I to bring it up? How does this come about? Well, Jesus took care of that. Jesus, P Peter was, so many ways, so many times of of being the guy that stepped up to do things, but yet blowing it. And so here we go. We go to Jesus. He's resurrected from the dead. The disciples, they were still all in on fishing. They still went back to fishing. And they fished all night. In the morning, they see Jesus on the shore. He's got breakfast fixed for them. And so they go eat breakfast. We go to John twenty-one fifteen. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Now, what's interesting here, because the Bible doesn't always give us all the details. Was there, was there a conversation between these questions or not? We, we don't know. John may have condensed it down. On the other hand, it might have been just this straightforward. A third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, we, we don't have an explanation from the Bible on exactly what's going on here, but we can surmise Peter denied Jesus three times. And here three times, Jesus is inquiring of Peter, 
do you, do you really love me? Now, there's a lot more going on in the Greek language here than what we're going to go into this morning, but we're just, we're just coming back to this, that this was penetrating for Peter because Peter had to have that denial in his mind this whole time. Jesus was confronting that issue without actually bringing it up and, and saying, hey, Peter, remember, remember that night of my betrayal? Jesus didn't go there, but he, he went deeper by questioning Peter's love for him. And we think about Peter. Just think about his life that he had lived with Jesus. He had experienced so much with Jesus. He was there for the first miracle of turning the water into wine. Peter was there for the Sermon on the Mount. Peter was there to see Jesus healing people. And Peter also was given that ability through God's Spirit, through Jesus, to heal people. Remember that Jesus sent the people out, sent the disciples out two by two, and, and they, could, they could cast out demons and they could heal. So Peter had even experienced doing that. Peter had walked on water. Nobody but Jesus had ever done that before or after. At least that we know of, unless God gave a special miracle sometime we're not aware of. And let's not forget, on the night of Jesus' betrayal, Peter did try to defend Jesus. He took out his sword and struck, I think it was the servant of the high priest, cut his ear off. So Peter was ready to go, but what happened at that denial? Well, number one, it was totally unexpected. Peter wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to be confronted like that. So he wasn't thinking about, you know, I gotta have my gotta have my sword on me, or gotta have my, in our case, our guns and, and loaded and cocked and ready to go. He, he wasn't ready for that. He he wasn't thinking, he wasn't uh physically ready in any aspect, and so he got caught off guard. It's like, uh, there's, there's some days I, I just know that I'm a grumpy old bear, and so I'm trying to watch, you know, be careful. I'm, I'm watching the front door for Satan to try to come in at me. Well, what does he do? He comes down the chimney like, like the, the big bad wolf or comes in the back door, the back window. And this is what he did to Peter. He hit Peter where he wasn't expected, where he least expected it. And Peter failed to follow Jesus. Peter failed to be all in. Peter learned the difficulty of following Jesus, and it wasn't easy. You see, following Jesus is challenging. Following Jesus is difficult and challenging, but it is possible. And it is rewarding by means of the Holy Spirit. It's hard to follow Jesus. It's, it's difficult. It's challenging. But by the Holy Spirit, it is possible. And it is rewarding if you just follow through and carry it through. When you think about Peter's life, especially after Jesus' resurrection and ascension, on the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, Peter preached a powerful message and about 3,000 people came to Christ and was baptized. In Jesus, the, the, the church was born with Peter's great sermon. We read in the Gospel of uh, the uh, Book of Acts where Peter was in prison and, and he, he was beaten for Jesus. He was in prison another time and, and the angel of the Lord came and let him out. Unlocked everything. Just right out, walked into the streets. Peter was told to stop preaching. What did he do? Next day he's back out there preaching once again. We read of Peter's two letters. This, this so-called ignorant fisherman. No education. And you look at the 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 knowledge and the wisdom in the two letters of first and second of Peter that he wrote is it's unbelievable, but powerful, possible, and rewarding by means of the Holy Spirit. And then we hear about the tradition of Peter's death. 
Tradition, church history, says that Peter died by crucifixion. He did indeed follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Tradition says he was crucified upside down because he did not feel worthy to be crucified in the same manner of Jesus Christ. Peter, this guy that had messed up in so many ways, followed Jesus despite the difficulty, despite the challenge, and because he persevered in following, God rewarded him. And he is with Jesus today. It's by the grace of God and Peter's perseverance that he succeeded. Peter gives us a great example of the challenging aspect, the difficult aspect of following Jesus. He gives us the example of obedience. He gives us the example of making mistakes. He gives us the example of Jesus forgiving him. And he gives us the example of persevering and coming out, following Jesus, he had denied himself, he had taken up his cross, literally, in the end, and followed Jesus. Peter followed, and he was all in. The question for us, are we all in? Are we following? Are we, are we truly denying ourselves? Are we truly taking up our cross? And are we truly following? Not just here and now, not just on Sunday morning, not just inside the walls of the church, but outside the walls where it gets difficult and challenging. What are you doing with that? And of course, if you're outside of Christ, we'd love that you would come and accept Jesus, repent and be baptized. But just know, it's a hard road. It's a difficult road. But it is vastly, rewarding. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty Father in heaven, Jesus, he didn't mix words on this. Once we study and once we understand, it's tough. But he also said, compared to trying to do this on your own, it's, it's actually a light burden. And he's going to help us carry the load. He's going to help us through this. And, 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 and we have the Holy Spirit as Christians to help us to travel this road. So help us to understand that it isn't easy. But we're not carrying the burden ourselves. Jesus is here with us. And so, Father, for those of us that are Christians, help us to understand that we're going to fail. You know it. And that's not to make an excuse, well, I couldn't do it, I tried, but I couldn't. No, that, that's not what we mean. We try our best to follow, and when we try our best and still fail, you're there to pick us up and carry us. So, Father, convict us this morning, and if there's anyone outside, lead them here. For it's in Jesus Christ, your Son's name, that we pray and give thanks. Amen. Thank you for watching the message. If we can help you in any way, we ask that you please contact us. Check us out on our website at roscoffchurch.org. You can find the information there, how to contact us. We'd love to hear from you, talk with you, and help you in your walk with Jesus. Thank you once again for joining with us.